We're setting up pit traps and making savage attacks. That's right, it's Ring of Chaos from Beetle and Grimm's. In this fearsome fantasy free-for-all, three to six players control their own adventuring parties, each vying for control of the, you guessed it, Ring of Chaos. Over a series of turns, players will command their party, casting spells and swinging swords. The first player to amass 11 summoning points wins the game. Setup begins with the battle map. Players decide together which of the two maps to play, placing at center. Each player then takes a player mat, which has a slot for an adventuring party card, a turn order reminder, a summoning ladder ranging from 0 to 11, and four slots for heroes of the adventuring party. You got your fighter, cleric, rogue, and wizard. Next, randomly select a first player and deal them two adventuring party cards. They're going to choose one to keep and pass the remaining card to the next player. That player is dealt a second adventuring party card and repeats this process, then continues around the table until all players have selected an adventuring party. Players read their party's name, special power, and announce their party's catchphrase. Players get to make this one up, and the yeah, canon should be pretty simple. For example, I've got the Den of Thieves, and our catchphrase is, We're gonna get you stuff. We're gonna get it. I'm gonna tickle those coins right out of you. Then, each player takes the four hero cards associated with their party and arranges them face up onto the four class slots of their player mat. Now, there's no strategic impact to this choice, just judge the rolls for yourself. The face down side features a red splatter and cannot defend label. These represent one of the three states the hero can be in. Full strength, which is face up, wounded, which is face down, and dead, which is off the mat. Dead heroes means a player cannot play any class cards of that class. Players also take the two matching standees for their adventuring party, placing one on the zero space of the summoning ladder and another at the starting space closest to their seat. Next, place the Ring of Chaos on the Chaos Altar in the center of the map. Then take the eight Temple Guardian cards and the Deck of Action cards and shuffle those puppies together. Deal four cards to each player, which they keep in a private hand. If any player is dealt a Temple Guardian during setup, they discard it to a discard pile and take a replacement card from the top of the deck, which is set face down into a draw deck right next to that discard. Gameplay! This occurs in turns, each divided into three phases. Draw phase, action phase, and discard phase. The player to the left of the player who selected the first adventuring party takes the first turn after which turns continue clockwise. On a turn, the player first draws three cards. Players draw these one at a time, immediately resolving any Temple Guardians when drawn. Temple Guardian cards attack all parties, and each player can choose which of their heroes will take the attack. After the Temple Guardian attack has been resolved, discard it, and the drawing player draws another card to their hand to replace it. They then take up to three actions. Players may only take one action of each type, but they can be taken in any order. Actions include move, attack, and bonus. Let's look at each one. Move allows the player to either play a move action card or move up to two spaces on the battle map. The battle map is made up of circular spaces, which parties may occupy, and lines, which connect these spaces to each other, creating adjacency. When moving on the map, if a space where a player ends their movement is occupied by another party, they can push that other party to another empty adjacent space of the active player's choice. This doesn't apply when moving through a space. Attack allows the player to either play an attack action card or draw one from the draw deck. Attacks come in two main types, melee and ranged. Melee attacks only affect parties adjacent to the active player's party on the map. Ranged hits any party not adjacent to theirs. Now some attacks have the any designation, which can be either ranged or melee. An all attack action affects all parties, except the party who played it. Generally, the attacking player is the one who chooses which hero is affected by an attack. In the case of all attacks or attacks from Temple Guardians, the defending player chooses which hero is attacked. Note that many attack cards have a counter card, which can prevent their effect. 
If an attack card is played against a party, that party's controller can play the counter card immediately from their hand if they have it. All heroes begin the game at full strength. If an attack against them is successful, they are flipped to their wounded side. Wounded heroes can't use counter cards to defend themselves, and if they receive another attack, they're dead and removed from the mat. When a hero dies, a player can no longer use cards exclusive to that hero's class. If all of a player's heroes are dead, that player is eliminated from the game, discarding all their cards and removing their standee from the map. The player who dealt the final killing blow receives all of the eliminated player's summoning points. One note though, a player cannot gain points beyond 10 in this way. You gotta earn that game winning point via the ring. If the eliminated party was wearing the ring, it's dropped onto their space on the map. Bonus action. This allows the player to either play a bonus action card or pick up the ring of chaos if it's in their space. They can alternatively steal the ring of chaos from an adjacent adventuring party. When acquiring the ring, the player places it under their standee on the board and immediately gains one summoning point. Additionally, if a player begins their turn still with the ring, they gain three summoning points. Once a player has resolved their actions, they go to the third phase of their turn, the discard. The player discards down to a hand limit of five cards. Turns continue until one of two endgame conditions are met. Either one player achieves 11 summoning points, or one player is the last party standing, meaning they've eliminated all other parties. That player wins the game. And that's the basics of Ring of Chaos. I'm Becca Scott, this is Good Time Society, and you, you have the Ring of Chaos. Give it to me! No! Come here! Come here! Give me the...